It's Wednesday, and we're thankful that you guys are here with us. I'm here with TJ, and uh, we're ready to do Genesis chapter 23, Genesis chapter 23 today. Um, <clears throat> we uh, we'll continue to watch as things are opening up around here. I haven't seen a, uh, I was following uh, like the case count in Center County. I haven't seen a big surge yet. So well, hopefully, but I think you were saying you there was a there was a party near uh, your girlfriend's uh, place the, yep. <laughs> the the other night, and surprisingly they weren't wearing masks. Oh, <laughs> shocking! It was shocking there. <laughs> so so well, hopefully uh, things stay um, reasonably under control yep. in, the, in the coming weeks. So this uh, this chapter here covers the death of Abraham's wife Sarah, and there's some kind of interesting um, dealings that are going on in this that uh, are kind of foreign to us. Wouldn't be foreign to us if we lived in a place where you you haggle back and forth about pricing and stuff like that. And, uh, and Americans are only used to just like, here's the price, you, here's what you pay. But if you go into foreign countries some uh, at times, it, it, haggling over price is is a common thing <laughs> that, that you, you're supposed to bargain back and forth and come to some agreement on what what the price should be so it's not something that we're used to but uh, it's not that uncommon around the rest of the world so we're gonna take a look at Genesis 23 and I think you're gonna kick us off there Sarah lived to be a hundred and twenty seven years old and she died in Kiriath Arba which is Hebron uh, in the land of Canaan, and Abraham went to mourn for Sarah and to weep over her. Then Abraham rose from beside his dead wife and spoke to the Hittites. He said, I am an alien and a stranger among you. Sell me some property for a burial site here so I can go bury my dead. The Hittites replied to Abraham, Sir, listen to us. You are a mighty prince among us. Bury your dead in the choicest of our tombs. None of us will refuse you his tomb for burying your dead. Then Abraham rose and bowed down before the people of the land, the Hittites. He said to them, If you are willing to let me bury my dead, then let me, then listen to me and intercede with uh, Ephron, son of Zohar, on my behalf. So he will sell me the cave of Machpelah, uh, which belongs to him and is, in, and is at the end of the, his field. Ask him to sell it to me for full price as a burial site among you. Verse 10, Ephraim the Hittite was sitting among his people, and he replied to Abraham in the hearing of all the Hittites who had come to the gate of his city. No, my lord, he said, listen to me. I give you the field, and I give you the cave that is in it. I give it to you in the presence of my people. Bury your, you bury your dead. Again, Abraham bowed down before the people of the land, and he said to Ephraim in their hearing, listen to me, if you will. I will pay the price of the field, accept it from me, so I can bury my dead there. Ephraim answered Abraham, Listen to me, my lord. The land is worth 400 shekels of silver, silver, but what is that between me and you? Bury your dead. Abraham agreed to Ephraim's terms and weighed out for him the price he had named in the hearing of the Hittites, 400 shekels of silver, according to the weight current among the merchants. So Ephraim's field in Machpelah, uh, near Mamre, both the field and the cave in it, and all the trees within the borders of the field were deeded to Abraham as his property in the presence of all the Hittites who had come to the gate of the city. Afterward, Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave in the field of Machpelah near Mamre, which is at Hebron, in the land of Canaan. So the field and the cave in it were deeded to Abraham by the Hittites as a burial site. All right. So, as I said, a little different than we're, we're used to uh, as far as transactions go. Well, let's pray. God of grace and God of mercy, we pray that you would be with us now uh, as we reflect on the word that you have preserved for us, has come down to us through the centuries, through the millennia, to, to here and to now, um, and that our hearts will be changed by you and turn to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So one of the things that's recurring over and over again in Genesis is 
and you might miss it because we're so used to it people die right and so it's the curse really uh, of when they violated God's will and took from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil who said you 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 will die uh, doing that and death has entered into the world and so Genesis is bookended uh, first you know there's God speaking life but then our rebellion and death comes and so that the end of Genesis the very end of Genesis in chap chapter 50 which we'll get to eventually is the death of Joseph so there, there, you know, there's this recurring thing. So even Sarah, uh, Abraham, the father of faith, Abraham's wife, Sarah, dies. And, of course, Abraham is going to die as well. Uh, so this is, this is a lot for each of us. And if you're not ready for death, uh, then it becomes a very scary thing, I think, for people. And the only way we can be prepared for death is to receive the author of life to unto ourselves. So that when we make that transition, uh, when we breathe this last breath on this earth, we know we're held in the everlasting and loving arms of Jesus. Uh, but all of us have to kind of go through that, 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 time, that transition in our life. So Sarah dies. She only lived to be 127, youngster. <laughs> in there the ages as I said before like the eight you'll see before the flood very very long ages after the flood the ages come down 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 until they're kind of within alignment with what we have today uh, kind of in the 80 year range or so um, so that that's uh, you you see these ages continue to come down and now he's down 127 years old she dies and so Abraham doesn't have any land of his own. He's still a nomad, and he's looking for a place to bury his, his wife. And so he starts this bargaining with the, the Hittites. And it looks like the, the, the way that transactions were made is at the city gate. Like, it's like having a, a council session at the, at the city gate. And so they're gathering around the city gate, and you, you see the way the transactions occur, it's almost like everybody, the person who is gonna sell the property is trying to save face in the midst of all of this. And there's a lot of flattery, it seems like, goes on in, in this whole thing. Uh, and it's like, the Hittite calls Abraham Lord, my Lord. Like, you know, it's like, this guy's a nomad, <laughs> right? And, and the Hittite is calling him my Lord. And then there's a lot of bowing down and there's a lot of um, bargaining uh, that goes on. But it doesn't look like bargaining to us as Americans. What it looks like is, you know, if somebody said, well, I'm going to give you this land, America would probably say, oh, really? Thanks. Really appreciate it. <laughs> but that would have offended. That's what we don't understand. That would have offended the, the Hittite. There would have been war because of that probably. Um, so they have to get to the point of the price of the land, but it's it's a circuitous route that's taken. Uh, that it's it's not the way that we we're used to doing things. <laughs> I don't know. Do you go into a, do you go into Walmart and start haggling with the cashier about the price? Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I have you ever gone to a, a, a foreign country? Uh, gone overseas somewhere where it's more of a kind of a bargaining and and you're haggling over the price of, of things uh in ukraine it mostly depended on the type of store if it was like one of the larger chain stores no, no. but if it was just like one of the street vendors that was run by someone just trying to make a living then you probably could right it seemed like uh in some places it's almost expected that you would start to they, they would give you they give you a price and uh then they would tell you like a story with the price it's like oh uh, you know you would honor me if you would give me the, the this price or you're not you know there's some kind of a story that associated with it and then you kind of going back and forth and and eventually you arrive at some some price it it depends on where you are sometimes in the um caribbean region there's uh, there's more of that uh, definitely in africa 
there's there's more of that just kind of back and forth definitely obviously in the Middle East um, we're just we're just not that used to it <laughs> it's just like you I don't even even a street vendor like I wouldn't think of going to Philadelphia to get a cheesesteak and start uh, arguing with the vendor I think he would like probably punch me in the face in Philadelphia of course they threw snowballs at Santa in Philadelphia at the and the Eagles game when Santa appeared so you don't want to mess around with Philadelphia <laughs> in there. Somehow I got off track on the bargaining. <laughs> but the hit. So anyway, they agreed to the terms, and it's uh, 400 shekels of silver according to the weight current among the merchants, which might have meant it was an inflated plot price, uh, depending on what the current weight of the merchants was. That varied. It's like a fluctuating, uh, the the dollar, the or whatever it is. So. They, that was a fluctuating thing, and it, it might have been in the Hittites' favor. We don't know. We just don't. We just we don't know. So whatever the weight, the current weight of the merchants was for 400 shekels. So it wasn't an absolute weight, the way we would think of it as absolute weight. And so then uh, he receives the field, uh, receives the cave, and it becomes the burial place for his wife. And I think eventually for him then then as well. I don't know. Is there other things you had got from from this? Is kind of a did. I'm trying to remember. Did Abraham receive land prior to this passage, or is this his first time receiving land? Yeah, I don't. I th I don't think uh, he owned any. Okay. Anything because really. that was that was one of the promises, right? That he was going to get. He's going to receive all of this this land. It's like a huge amount. So, but you remember he's been on the move. He some went down to Egypt for a while. He comes back. Uh, he he lies uh, to uh, Abimelech about saying that his uh, wife is his sister, which is which is kind of his half sister. It's, uh, it's a half truth, but. You know, he's, he's, he lied about his wife when he went down to Egypt. He lies about his life, wife when he's in the presence of Abimelech, who's one of the kings in the region. So he doesn't really have anything. He's really kind of a nomad. Yeah. Um, so it's, it seems like this is like the start of the fulfillment of that promise. No, he, he actually owns land. There's a little toehold. Yeah. Two little toeholds. Because they really don't get the land right. until they come out of a captivity in Egypt. So the, it's not really... Uh, you know, fulfilled until they come out of captivity. Yep. In there, so that's long after Abraham is dead. <laughs> there, there. So you know, God will honor His promises, but it's probably not going to be in the time frame that we think yeah. it's going to be in. A lot of times, so we. It's a matter of, of trusting in Him each and every day. He will fulfill His promises, but maybe not in the way you exactly think, and in definitely not in your time scale. If you're like me. I'm not that patient, <clears throat> you know. I want the promises to be fulfilled right away. Um, so, anyway, God, God gives him a toehold in the in the region, a little tiny toe toehold. Yeah, I'm sure he wasn't really thrilled with the reason why it was able to happen. Yes, that, bury, burial of your wife. Mm -hmm. That gives you your first piece of property in your in the area. Yeah, kind of interesting. All right, well let's have, let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful day you blessed us with. Thank you for your presence in our life. Thank you for the gift of grace and mercy. And we're reminded, Lord God, that while all of us uh, have to pass through physical death, we are held in the everlasting and loving arms of Jesus and that his promises will not fail. He is the resurrection and the life and that um, death no longer has authority over us. Oh, death, where is your sting? Uh, thanks be to God for the victory that he's given to us in and through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Enjoy the beautiful day. And we're praying for the people in Texas with the uh, Hurricane Laura heading towards you. Heed the advice of the and, and the rulings of the emergency management, and everybody be safe. God bless you all. See ya.